On the anvils in front of you is a bar of high carbon steel that you will use the forged blade in your signature style, but with a hidden tang. A hidden tang is fastened inside the handle material, so it's not visible on the surface of the handle. Sounds easy enough, right? This is forged in fire, I'm sure. You're thinking, what's the twist? If you look around this forge, you'll see all the tools and equipment you need to accomplish this task, with one exception. We've removed all of the hand hammers in the forge. Instead, you'll have to forge your own hammers using these. I mean, who takes your toy away, right? This is my favorite toy. You took my toy away. I don't want to make anything with a rock on a stick. I want my hammer back. Your three-hour forging period starts now. And here we go. All right. It's like the start of a marathon. There's always a couple of guys that come out hot and then have to throttle it back down. Kelly's got her steel in. That's a wise move. That's smart work. My strategy coming into round one is to multitask, throw my round stock in the fire, and then in between heats, grab the block. Run the chop saw, and I'm going to cut off a third of it, try to lighten my hammer. My plan is to get the hammer done first. That hammer is everything to me. I've had little experience with larger equipment, so I need to make a hammer that I can forge my blade just as good as anything I would have ever done with any of my own tools. My plan is just weld the square tubing onto the top of this piece of mild steel. That's the quickest, easiest way for me to get that hammer made. That's out of the way. That's not a concern anymore. And then I can put my steel in the fire, and I can go. Looking at Frank's hammer, he's got the handle all the way in the back. Do you see that style on Sawyer's hammers, Japanese-style bladesmithing hammer? I use that type of hammer only for blade finishing. The forward weight and flat face on that hammer make it ideal for smoothing out that steel. That may be his intention. This hammer's taking way too long. It doesn't have a ground face, it doesn't have a handle, and I've spent I don't even know how long trying to knock the front of this thing off. There he goes! There oh, goes. Wow. Yeah. I'm 30 minutes into the competition and finally have the consciousness to throw the, the bar of steel that I need to forge into a knife into the fire. I'm feeling the pressure. Dual tongs grinding on her blade. Grinding was hot. That's experience. What has impressed me is the amount of hammer work that Kelly has done to that blade. Shaping the hammer in between, getting the right curvature, and just continuing to work. She hasn't stopped. She's like a machine. I do like the fact that all of our smiths with the one hour point are on the grinder. Frank's knife is really thick. He's got a lot of grinding. Before I heat treat, I like my blades to be on the thicker side. The thinner my blades are, the more likely they are to crack or have distortion in them. If I get a crack, obviously it can be catastrophic. We'll just grab clay off of the shelf in the pantry. I grab the clay to try to increase the strength of the spine, but retain the hardness of the edge, so it make an excellent chopping tool. And he's Quinch in the quench. In. One of the problems he's going to have is a lot of fire, because that clay is absorbing the oil, and it's not going to go out unless he scrapes it off. Looks like Will's got a little bit of a warp. Oh, not good. I got to reheat and reharden. My daddy told me, if you're going to be stupid, you got to be tough. And I get in a lot of stupid situations. This ain't nothing. Kelly is quenched. As I pulled my blade out, everything looked pretty happy. I hit it with a file. It was hard. So I went back on my merry way with my hot knife and my big gloves. Back to grinding. Justin's in the oil. Frank quenched. He's in the oil. Going into my second quench, I could end up with a huge crack or another warp, which would set me back and probably send me home. I need to start praying. 10 minutes! You have 10 minutes remaining! They're coming down to the wire. Everybody's at the grinder except for Frank. I think Frank's decided he's done. Frank is uh, cleaning up his workstation. It's very considerate. As I'm at the grinder, trying to get rid of the extra mass, I notice I have a wobble going on. And uh, I'm kind of wishing I should have not spent so much time profiling my hammer. We're being judged on the knife, not on the hammer. Blade Smith, you have one minute remaining. Ten, nine, eight, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Shut down your machines, drop your tools. Everything went perfect. It came out just, ah, beautiful. Like I won the lottery. Blade Smiths, it's now time for the judges to evaluate your work. Justin, you're up first. Please present your blade to the judges. From where I'm sitting, it looked like this blade was paper thin, and I'm glad to see it's not. But in general, it looks good, it feels good. It's, it's, it's got a lot of weight to it, but it doesn't feel heavy. Kelly, you're up next. Please present your blade to the judges. The grind lines are very clean, very nice and even. Like, you know what flat is. That's definitely flat. There's still a lot of material here. Love to see some weight come out of that. But uh, all in all, great shape for a chopper. Will, you're up. Please present your work to the judges. Nice design, nice feel. For being one of the youngest competitors ever that we had in this forge, that's a good blade, sir. I noticed that you would leave it in the forge for very extended amounts of time, which I was concerned about. That's detrimental to your steel at a certain place. I don't know what that metal is going to be like. It may have some serious decarburization. Frank, you're up. Please present your blade to the judges. As far as the shape goes, I think it's nice. You know, you, you pull the tanto off well. I like how you were able to, to make your hammer just like that in the dog's head style and then get right in the forging. You were just, you were right on it immediately. But. When I'm closely inspecting this blade, I see some things that really kind of trouble me. It's a lot of cracks. It's like a lightning storm going across the blade. Did you notice those? No, sir, I did not. That is one of my biggest concerns with this blade, and it's very unfortunate because that is where a blade can fail. Bladesmiths, the judges have examined your work, and unfortunately, it's time for one of you to leave the forge. Frank, your blade did not make the cut. Frank, it was a pleasure to watch you stay cool under pressure. Unfortunately, you have cracks running through the blade. That's going to fail when we begin cutting with it. And that's why we're sending you home. I understand. Frank, please surrender your blade. A crack in an edge or a blade is catastrophic. That was a very big surprise. But surface cracks happen. It's just part of the game. Am I going to stop making blades? No. Nothing to feel ashamed of. First thing I'll do when I get home is give my wife a hug and then probably head out to the forge and start working again.